Hey, Laura, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm very, very good. Thank you so much for asking. It's so good to have you on the podcast. I I guess a bit of background, like we met a while ago. Um, we well, I did, I did, actually we didn't meet. I met you, but you didn't meet me, which is quite weird. I saw you pitch <laughs> at the pitch event. Um, the pitch sponsored the podcast uh, last year, pretty much, and uh, I saw you pitch at the pitch competition. And I was kind of I loved the story that you were telling, even though it was like two minutes long. It was pretty crazy how short it was. And I thought I'd get you on the podcast because I love the story and I love the mission that you guys have um, with with financial. So yeah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on. And actually, yeah, reflecting back on the pitch, it was a great competition to enter. And a funny story is we kind of really messed up our first pitch in Manchester. We only just got through and it was a I'd not done my homework on it. I'd done much more of an investor based one. And it was about the business and me and formalities. And kind of when we rethought how we wanted to take it to the final in London, we wanted to share more of the story and the why. Mm. And I think my opening line was, my name is Laura and I was shit with money. And um, it's not really maybe the first thing you put into an investor pitch, but it was the truth that it was something that kind of grabbed everyone's attention at the beginning and then what followed made sense. And um, yeah, doing it in doing it in two minutes is you have to pick the bits that are going to resonate with people mm. and really benefited from it massively. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was uh, uh, nice to hear that, that you were there and that, you know, we and I made an impact on you back then. Mm, yeah, I mean, has Source, uh, I guess like a bit of background before we jump into like what the business is, but I guess what is Financial? So Financial is a female focused financial wellness platform. Um, financial helps people take control of their money and feel more financially well. And we started off life as an Instagram page um, and now we're an app where people can have free content if they want and free tools to help them manage their money um, or, or premium features that help them actively track not just their their budgets and their goals, but their net worth, which is something that's incredibly important. And they can find a community there as well. So um, yeah, financial, that that's why we exist. We exist to help people be financially well. So it's a very purpose-driven and rewarding business. But it's specifically around, around women, right? It is. Now we have 80% female, 20% non-female in our community. So a you know, a variety of different genders. And I think what we're really good at doing is being very inclusive and bringing especially men along on the journey. Some of our biggest advocates are male um, in the community. And a lot of the stuff we teach is about money management. And if you're in a couple, it's doing it together. And there's no use, there's no use having an area for women in the corner where women have a chat about how far behind women may be or, or how how tough it is to manage money and um, what's the point in that so we kind of have a female first or a female focused initiative but you know it's we think everyone everyone's a feminist in there anyway male or female so yeah we're quite inclusive but dominated by the female demographic mm. and I'm guessing that you started this you know the community first and then the app following and I guess like the journey's only on onwards and upwards but I guess you started it because like I think from your from your pitch it was like obviously women are disproportionately like they don't have as much sort of investment power uh, like as investment education as it were definitely and I think honestly I didn't realize it so the female focused initiative came a little bit later financial was an Instagram page that I set up on maternity leave um about four years ago now and it was an outlet for me because I've been on a money journey where no one in my life had taught me to manage money Um, I hadn't had any significant financial education I was a graduate lawyer on a good salary but no money left and and I became a mother quite young and, and was having to navigate this space that I really wasn't prepared for I was very good at buying a bottle of Verve Clicquot or going shopping at Ted Baker or going to like Itsu for lunch that was all quite easy but actually deciding things like pensions and savings for a house and and you know ultimately being more financially well, I, I had no clue about. So I've been on a journey and then um, started the Instagram community. So you know, lots of people use the word community, but we really are one. It, it started off as lots of individuals helping each other, um, following a me- simple methodology that I'd put together. 
and it it just grew from there and when you get you know proper user generated wins yeah. and user generated stories it it kind of has this network effect and this reinforcement of we're building something really good and we're helping people so um yeah that's that's kind of the background as to why it, it, and it was only when we then honestly started to look at who was speaking to us, what our demographic was, what issues were resonating more, that we kind of uncovered this massive gender disparity. You know, everyone's heard of the pay gap, but the other elements to it, like the women are two and a half, uh, women do two and a half times more unpaid labour around the home, you know, whether that's children or for parents or for for what have you. And, you know, women are um, behind in their investments massively. There's a £1.65 trillion gender investment gap in the UK alone. And these numbers are just crazy. And so when you hear those and you put it together with the problem that you're trying to solve, which is helping people feel more financially well, you you can't ignore it. So I think that's the Mm -hmm. point. It's it's definitely front and centre. But as I said, the whole community is behind that, not just females. Why did you start the Instagram in the first place? Because it sounds like you, so you were, you know, going out for lunch to expensive places. Well, it's just not too expensive. It's just like spending money lucratively. And then um, I guess trying to educate yourself more than anything and then starting this Instagram. But you only discovered about the gender imbalance later down the line. So I guess like, why did you start the yeah. Instagram in the first place? So it was anonymous. It was an outlet for me to share, you know, what I felt was my knowledge and and my, my gift to the world that had been learned and I'd failed and I'd messed up and I'd done well. And, you know, I, I, but I was worried about what people would think when you're speaking about money and how to manage it. It's a very personal and private thing. We don't, especially in the UK, it's not something that we talk about often or we, or we share. So it just started out as an outlet with me kind of sharing hacks and tips and and actually just honestly direct and different ways to think about things. So, for example, one of the biggest things we do on our platform is we're anti-consumer debt. And there's loads of people that go, well, what about points and what about, you know, this, that and the other? And you can it helps your credit score. And like we just feel people miss the point. It actually the, the number one thing that holds women back at, as well as men, but women back from building wealth is income. And if their income is going towards a lot of finance payments, they're not going to be able to have enough capital left over to invest. So you can play with your points all you like. I refuse to use them. I don't do air miles. And people might go, oh, you're missing a trick. Well, evidence shows that 5% of people that manage credit cards do so to their monetary advantage. 95% of people get it wrong. They either miscalculate, take their eye off the ball, or they spend more than they were going to spend because they're in this gamification. Because do you know what? Visa and MasterCard know what they're doing and ironically they're debt-free companies which is um, always always fun to to learn but they're gonna win and so part of being financially well is taking away some of these distractions and saying uh, you know I'll do me and I'll make this more simple so I think Mm. it started off as an Instagram account that spoke differently and people started to go oh okay I've not heard this before like it's not just education it's it's an opinion it's a direct kind of comment on something and and yeah that seems just to work really well but there was no intention whatsoever at the beginning at least to make it into an app it was literally just an outlet no. to like educate and stuff like that it's very interesting that's correct that's correct it, it, it and you know i think there's two reasons people start businesses there are absolute born entrepreneurs who are probably unemployable because or if they are, it needs to be in a cool startup that kind of, or or a free thinking business that allows an individual creativity and autonomy and room room to grow. And you can find organizations like that. So you don't have to go and set up a business, but there's some people that it's just in them. And I was probably a little bit of that person on reflection when I look back and CEOs that I've worked with before probably have been very patient and given me like space to to do what I want to do. But other people, which is a bit more like me, find a problem and go hang on a minute no no one's sorting this out so we had an instagram that um we i had an instagram that came up with a methodology to manage money and so what i did is i took everything off the instagram page and codified it into a pdf an ebook and i sold it well actually i gave it away at first you give it away people don't do it you give it away so we gave it away during the pandemic because I had a you know corporate corporate job and a really good career, really good prospects. I didn't need to set up a business. That was not something that I had always dreamt of doing. I dreamt of running a big business, but that doesn't need to be the one that I start. Mm-hmm. 
And so I created this PDF that was basically a summary of everything that was in on the Instagram page and gave it away during the pandemic in March, April 2020. And people just didn't do it. They kind of went, oh, thanks. After they'd asked for help, you know, in desperation. Because Instagram page used to get 20, 30, 40 messages a day of desperation, especially at that early stage when people didn't know what was happening. So I was like, okay, sod it. I'll charge 50 quid for it. Sold 500. So there's this wait, really wait, weird wait, thing. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, yeah. <laughs> so you, I just want to like make highlight this because I didn't know this before you, you started saying it. So you, you only had two minutes at the pitch. So you, you gave, you gave it away for free at the beginning, this ebook like people yeah. downloaded it but they weren't really like caring about it they weren't using it the education that was in there and then you were like oh fuck this i'm gonna put 50 pound on it so you, you charge 50 pound for it and then you got 500 people yeah. purchasing it yeah i mean that was over the course of about six months so it wasn't kind of still, on the next still, day it's still pretty crazy like so why do you think that is yeah so when we were directing people People were asking for help. People were in stressful states. The People had used the Instagram page as a bit of an agony aunt thing for quite a while. So I've got the situation, how can you help? And we kind of had this um, stock response, which was, we can't, we can't tell you what to do and we can't give you financial advice. The lawyer in me definitely came out. But it was kind of like pointing people to resources. This blog post may help you. Have a look at this post. This yeah, is yeah. going to help. So then it was just not scalable because I was doing 80 hours a week in the travel industry during the pandemic. I was kind of bringing people coordinating a, a repatriation effort bringing people back from around the world as you remember at that time it was kind of crazy and borders were shutting and my sister who's now the co-founder at the time was like you can, this is not sustainable it's not scalable fucking write it down <laughs> I was like okay I can do that I'm a lawyer so it looked like a dissertation you should have seen it it was like in google docs and it was lots of text and the you know it was codifying it in kind of this like order different just I mean on your own post, but also from other other yeah. blogs that you were linking to, it's just like collate it all into one place. So it was all. Um, I'm going to cough. Sorry. <clears throat> so it was all our content, but it was all in a bit of a different order. And then what I did was I embellished. So for example, there was a post saying um, the big post on debt and mental health. And that might be seven words. So then I would then take the time to go to the Mind Charity website and Step Change website and kind of get some of the data behind why my phrase was correct. And so if you kind of do that in in, in different spaces, you start to build up a picture, which is a, a, a hefty product then. It was a real lengthy, I mean, it was 80 pages. Mm. I've still got it today. So we were then sending that back when people would message in and then we'd follow up like a week later. And, and if people did it, which they did do it once in a while, but they kind of, you have to want to do it. They said, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. No one's ever explained it to me in this order, in this way. But others would kind of be like, oh yeah, I've not got around to it. I've not printed it off. And we were just a bit like, what is this? And I think, and coming back to then your entrepreneurial instinct and my product background, because I did do a couple of years in product as well, straight um, as whilst I was a lawyer, I then moved into digital transformation because I, I was close to the operational team. So my product knowledge from that side was kind of mm, people don't perceive value in it. Mm. We're kind of, we're, we're devaluing the product by it being free. I, you know, how many of us could go on YouTube and learn how to cook tomorrow or quite frankly, go for a run. But when we've paid for a gym or have paid for a PT, we're more likely to turn up. And so there was this perceived value and, and there were other courses online, some like finance courses that were a couple of hundred quid. And I was kind of like, li I literally picked a random figure. And that's where the financial playbook came in. And I'd always wanted to write it down because my sister said to me, I had two girls at the time and I always said, if there's anything I want my girls to know, it's how to manage money this way because this way will make them feel good. There's a million ways to manage money. There's a million different views. But if they manage money this way, then if anything happens to me, if I go under a bus, they're okay. So I always wanted to write it down. It was just the pandemic was the like come to Jesus time, which is like, okay, yeah, let's yeah. write it down. And um, and so that was our MVP, if you think about it. It was a PDF. It was like a exactly. dissertation. Exactly. You but yeah, I guess like without like either consciously or unconsciously, you did build an MVP. Like it was free at first, and then you made it paid, and then you got some like decent money out of it to be fair like 500 times 50 is like not bad for a first product 
um, launching. I know like there's a lot of legwork in actually building that community at the beginning, and like we'll talk about that a bit later. But I think that's crazy. I I, I love to hear that story. That's an amazing story. Um, yeah. I hope for someone listening. I hope for people listening, they they realize that actually you can start really small, and there's so much. Um, there's so much guidance out there about tips to kind of start small. I mean, the Lean Startup by you know by Eric Ries is a, a great book, and it it's that very concept. And I think people think businesses need to be big and perfect and exact, and and they can't be a vanity project. So you know, we couldn't have started from day one and said we're building an app and this is what it's going to be because that's for us. That's not for people. You yeah. have to really get under the skin of what people want and we are still doing that today you know we're, we're still doing that with the app and, and the journey and kind of what's next we had to get under the skin of what people want and test it so for example it was a pdf but it had some paper budgeting because we do budgeting in a particular way we teach people to do it a little bit like a pnl and um, a lot of people say pay yourself first and we kind of go well, well you've not got a lot that's a really difficult thing to do so let's flip it like a pnl and then encourage people to grow their profits or grow their excess so there was no budgeting tools that would do this and apps wouldn't do this. And so we built a spreadsheet and sold that for a tenner. And again, really basic spreadsheet, but because it matched the content, people were like, oh my God, finally. So I can learn and then I can do and then I can track. And th- honestly, then the next phase of, you know, that revenue that we took, um, we reinvested and we bootstrapped an app. So we didn't get investment. We used out the profits in the business at the time to build our MVP app which was the PDF and the Excel in a more usable kind of structure. So it, to step back, it looks kind of quite linear. Yeah. But at the time, we didn't think we'd get to app. It was starting I mean, yeah, at solving this exactly, problem. But I guess when, so you, at, the, at that point, you had just the, the PDF and the Excel. PDF was 50 pound, Excel was 10. Um, yeah. And people were like buying it because of the value you were bringing and because like, there wasn't a good solution out there that already existed. The only reason now you've gone to an app is to make it more user friendly, to make it more seamless and stuff like that. But the very Correct. basic bare bones that, I mean, it obviously worked, um, was, yeah. was the PDF, was the Excel. So I think like literally it, it surprised me so much, the sort of businesses I get on because there's so many different types of MVP out there. And I still get surprised as to like what passes an MVP. Like this, this one is another one that's like, it's new to me. Um, selling PDFs and selling like Excel spreadsheets. I've not heard that before. And it's an amazing example. But if you if you are creative, you can solve problems in different ways. And people, people are obviously willing to pay for it if they don't have another solution that exists out there. And I think it's that concept of traction. So traction doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't even need to be paying customers, yeah. but you can get traction yeah. on an Instagram page, pu- putting a poll up mm. and saying kind of, what do you think? That is traction. You know, what I don't like is when people have like buried themselves in a room for like six years to build a business that they're not sure if anyone needs. Mm. Yeah. So actually doing the, taking the time to kind of solve people people's problems and and build a solution that matches it it's a real it's a slower journey you know it really is and it's a bit more disciplined and it's not as sexy sometimes but you you end up getting much more it's validation is it you get validation for the thing you're building without having wasted you know sweat and tears for it to come to nothing no it's amazing and that the the the, what you were being informed to build like so the, the pdf and the excel that was coming from straight from the community correct Correct. Well, so the I guess the community, which was the Instagram page, was probably at about four or five thousand followers when we launched the PDF, had affirmed that this is good content, and I like being told to do things one at a time. So that helped us realize there was something in this kind of we call it the couch to five k for money, and it's this concept of you could follow our plan and a million other plans, but our plan does work. So if you want to do it, you have to stick to it. But, um, you know, like how people like being given a meal plan or a fitness plan. So that was validation. So we built it. So the, the community didn't say we would love an ebook that tells us what to do, but that's what product market fit is. It, it's not building what people tell you they want. It's watching what they're doing and trying to understand what jobs they're trying to do in the jobs to be done theory and going, right, okay, what would be helpful like and 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 bouncing off and it like I said, it wasn't even my concept I'd always wanted to write it down it was my sister that said writing it down will help these people that come through on dm and ask a million questions so um the the, the 
really good thing is when you release an MVP, it's not done. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the PDF actually never got amended in the end. It, it has done in the app, so the educational area of the app, Learn, is uh, we took feedback. It didn't have enough on grow because the sections are survive, build, and grow. And because it was built during a pandemic and it was about survival, mm. the survive bit is the chunky bit and grow was kind of light. Whereas, you know, starting to bring in stuff to do with cryptocurrency, property investment, um, starting a business that is now in grow whereas in the original one it was much shorter and it was just much more about okay you're at this stage now where you are consumer debt free you've built up an emergency fund you've bought your property you you, you you're on track let's point your disposable income towards growth mm -hmm. that's kind of where it ended the other thing was in the community because we actually have a separate area off off socials we have a community where people do the plan together and that was really good for us to just watch because someone would do the plan and say, I'm in build and I'm trying to pick what my large emergency fund should be. And I'm thinking six times salary, but like six months salary, but some, but my partner says 12 months. What did you do? And everyone kind of jumps in and helps that person. And we can sit and watch and go, ah, OK, so it works not to codify what they should save. Because some people say you should, some people say you shouldn't, because people have got different views. But actually, we could use this as part of the discussion. So yeah, when someone's yeah. deciding what emergency fund, so we were just sitting and watching and learning, and we do that today. You know, we, we listen to what people are doing and is that use it the to inform. App or is that within like a like a Discord or something like that. So it's a SaaS platform, and it because we had the SaaS platform next so before we built the app we decided to have a community area that was a bit more private than instagram it's free to join but it was kind of a place where people could be themselves and and share but at the moment it is in the app but it's um version one which is a web wrap so the next version will be understanding how our people use community how they want to change it so for example one thing we may do is bring anonymity mm -hmm. Because some people may want to ask something that's that's something we'll private, them, yeah. and if if it's Laura Pomfret ha asking, then everyone, and I'm going to say, I mean, I'm having problems with my husband and how he manages money. Someone could tell him yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, and so we're we're kind of doing lots of testing. That's going to be the next phase of kind of work over the summer is listening, learning, watching what they do, and mm -hmm. actually build that in a native way into our app. Laura, how did you build this community to what it is now? Because it, it, I mean. Or I guess like how did you build it to a point where you have that critical mass of people by being able to like buy the PDF, buy the Excel, and you can actually get like valuable data off the back of that? I guess like how did you grow it to that point and then grow it to like what it is right now? So uh, the the platform of choice was Instagram. Um, we are on TikTok as well, and we we are in a couple of other spaces, but. Instagram meant that because you can kind of find your people and find your crowd and find your niche, hashtag strategy, stuff like that, we could just have focus in one place. And we encourage conversations. So one thing that's important to us are real stories. So people call it user-generated content. I'm not a marketeer, so I don't like saying that because it makes it sound like you're using your users for content. Stories are at the center of everything we, we do. So what we were finding was people were drawn when we'd share stories, whether it was anonymously or whether it was publicly. Um, but also th this concept of asking people for their view on things, not only is it a nice thing to do, it brings you a more well-rounded and diverse, you know, that, you know, we are two white girls from Manchester. So when a um, mixed race man from Newcastle joins the community, we're going to get a different perspective about what it's like with her, his Nigerian mother in um uh Geordie father and what that's like managing money and kind of helping to widen our all our collective views on it and so it was this kind of pushing on users and stories and people like that and they want to be a part of it I think the other thing is when they see something working and working well you're drawn to it so well they other, were seeing success people. stories yeah success stories, correct yeah. Yeah, they just, like people just love to see other people win. It's not about themselves. They There's something called the debt-free wall. So we have a debt-free wall in the community where when people pay off a debt, they can shout about it. And it could be a £20 debt that they owe their mum or it could be a £20,000 car loan. And the, the energy that people put into celebrating other people's financial wins when they're meant to be sorting their own stuff out is just incredible. Mm. And so community for us was about centering around an issue, which is some of the financial systems are fucked up women are well behind, I've not been educated because of A, B and C, 
so I, I'm now trying to fix up the mistakes of my last 10, 20, however many years. Let's all do it together. So community can't just be sent, like, it can't just be around a central purpose and then that's it. Because it wouldn't be sticky, would it? You've got to kind of get on the journey with people and, and bond and, and build relationships. Yeah, but you, so you had the the Instagram, but then you, you also had that sort of like chatting interface where people could like celebrate wins and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but I guess like how would people discover your Instagram? in the first place because like the the chat interface is probably the, the step number two but like the actual instagram yeah. itself how are people I, I'm, I, th- I think i know the answer but like yeah how would people discover it maybe you know you you'll end up knowing more than me because i, I really don't know um lots of people were referred and told about us so i think pe- people would say my friend, my mum, my boyfriend told me about you and uh, or I saw something shared. And so I think, again, we create our own content. Some people rip it off. It's very clear when someone has because we think about things differently. It's not like listing how you do an ISA, you know, when our content's quite direct and, and a different perspective. It's very clear when someone tries to um, uh, use it, and that's fine. It's kind of the the world we're in, and not all our content's original as well. It's kind of sharing and and supporting. But I think it stands out when someone shares it it, because it's not something in your normal feed. And so I think what we were finding was people would see family and friends comment on it, share it, and go, hang on a minute, I could do with that, or I want to be part of that community, or I've never thought of buying our pay later like that. So I'm going to learn more about that I want I'm going to follow and kind of join the join the club if you will I don't want to make it sound like a click it's a very open inclusive but I think people yeah well and maybe but but it can be especially when you know myself and or Holly get quite passionate about some of the more like systemic issues and the um you know the the product issues that there are out there and the the gender disparities so I think people go I trust what you're saying and I like it, and I want to know so more. So it sounds like it um, sounds like. How, the, do, how do you think people found well, us? I, I my initial thought was that the word of mouth element that you began the answer with. So yeah. it's like people refer their friends and stuff, and then like that sort of thing. And I think the success stories thing is a very powerful thing as well because it's like it shows that it's a proven formula, so people are more likely to share it, um, especially if it is like people like friends and family and stuff like that. Uh, and then also it it would also come down to what you said like creating that good content I would, and then obviously like people even though people would rip it off you would get the the small sort of percentage that would credit you which again like well, I, i'm assuming anyway because that, that's kind of what yeah definitely space. so then like people could discover you that way who would actually before we wrap up who would create the instagram content at the beginning um was it was it you guys like working you know after your jobs so it was, initially it was just me um and if you scroll to the very bottom of the instagram page you'll see the old school like it was when quotes were big you know black and white and quotes and quite impactful mm. and and um so it it was it, and, it, and it still is you know we don't we have a little bit of help and we're working to try and get better at that but it's so authentic to us that it's going to take people that work in our business quite a lot of time to, to nail it so that they deliver for the audience. You, know, you can't just, we couldn't just get a social creator that works on seven other businesses and suddenly get it. It's got to be someone yeah. who lives and breathes what our mission is. You know, our mission is to help millions of people to be financially well. Well, you know, you're not going to do that with cat memes, but you might do it with a couple, but mm. you've, you've got to get the balance of helping people with yeah. real issues and real problems and it's getting harder on social you know it, it, it's it's a bit of a wild west when it comes to customer acquisition but it's at home and it's where we kind of feel most comfortable mm. i i loved hearing your story laura and i what i also loved is that i think a lot of people like think when they when they think of a business they think of like a fully fledged one that they have to like when they're starting one they have to build like all all the bells and whistles i think yeah. you're one of quite a few businesses that I've had on the podcast before that have started their community from Instagram and I've grown through Instagram first and then built stuff on the back of that because they've got that traction because of the content they put out there because of the the, the hyper focus they have on like who they want to target um, and it just shows I guess how powerful these social tools can be and they get a lot of bad rap and they are like quite negative in some ways but 
for if you want to start a business, they can be extremely powerful tools. And there's other tools that you mentioned as well, like Google for uh, Google, you know, uh, Google sheets and like Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that, PDFs, whatever, like that you can test out things for, for very low tech. So yeah, it's been an amazing conversation with you, Laura, and I absolutely loved having you on. How can people stay in touch with you and financial going into the future? So, you know, our app is in both app stores and that's kind of the secret sauce to if you, you know, sat there and you're thinking you want to take control of your money, you want to be financially well, you want to make plans for the future or someone else in your life wants to or, or you think it could help them, then head to the stores because you'll find us there. We've got loads of content in there um, in a more direct way. Instagram, um, even if we've got other people managing the account, any messages that are direct Q&A come straight to myself. And I have lots of conversations with people, sometimes voice notes, sometimes DMs, you know, sometimes it'll develop into a, a call or a physical meet, um, you know, as we grow those. But we really do want to help people. What we're trying to do is how can we help people at scale, but still keep that intimacy and accept that this is someone's personal journey. So um, if you DM the financial Instagram account, you'll, you'll be able to get us and get me. And, and like I said, I'm also happy to share my experience of what it is building a business on the side as you're trying to. Um, navigate that deciding whether to make that leap we're very very open about our story because it's it's not um it's not all perfect business it's much more raw and pdf driven as as you well know so happy for anyone to contact me directly okay fantastic thank you so much laura for coming on the podcast again and i'm sure we'll chat very soon thanks so much thank you